This is The Record Collectors with the gruesome twosome, Mike Adams and Chris Savory. You're listening to Mike Adams and Chris Savory, The Record Collectors from the BBC between now and nine tonight. Hi, Brian Hyland here, and I'm the special guest on The Record Collectors with Mike and Chris next week. Hi, Brian Hyland here. I'm the special guest on The Record Collectors this week with Mike and Chris on Friday. See ya. And our very, very special guest on tonight's Record Collectors is Brian Hyland, all the way over from America. Welcome to the program, Brian. Thank you, Chris. Can I ask you if we can kick right back to the start? Uh, you come from New York City originally. Yeah. How did you actually get into the recording business? I, um... They put a gun in my head. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I, uh, I had a singing group uh, when I lived in uh, Queens. I lived in Queens, New York. And uh, I made a demo record uh, with some friends of mine, and uh, we brought it around to record companies. And uh, we got on a record label just by happening to be in the elevator at the right time, meeting somebody. They sent us over to this uh, building, and uh, met. Uh, we met with some people from Sammy Kay's office, the band leader, Sammy Kay. And uh, they took an interest in me, and I signed a contract to their uh, publishing company. I was cutting demos for them. And um, from that, that led to me getting a record contract with Cap Records. The group that you were with uh, at the time, I think, were they called the Delphi? The Delphi. Can you right. tell me a little bit about the group? Who was well, in the group? Well, it was three other people in the group. And um, we, uh, we just sang all the songs uh, that were popular at that time like uh, where are you little star stuff like that and uh, <laughs> the elegant song the elegant yes. right that was a great song like that's and a rare record huh? is that right mm. yeah huh. and we did uh, uh, all the kind of uh, songs doo-wop songs and things like that that were popular and um, we didn't really uh, sing professionally we sang at a couple of dances and things like that around in our neighborhood and uh, mainly we just practiced all the time and uh, and but then we we did that record with our own money. That was Rosemary, was it? No, no, no. That was the song. I I can't even remember what the song was. It was a uh, song that we wrote, and uh, that got us to to meet with people from the record companies. And then after I was cutting demos for their publishing company as a solo, then I, one of the songs was called Rosemary, and that was brought up to Cap Records. And then I recut it, and that was my first record. What's Rosemary? Uh, did you write Rosemary yourself? No, I didn't. Yeah, but yeah, your wife's name is Rosemary. Right. Uh, uh, did you know each other in those days or not? No, no we didn't. A, we well, lived a thousand I mean, that's miles. That's fate, isn't it? It's yeah, right. Good. Marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. Yeah. Was it Leader Records were you with initially then? Yeah, Leader Records. Now, uh, like it or not like it, the record which, uh, or one of the records that's associated with you is Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Polka Dot right. Bikini. Yeah. And one has, I've seen some old adverts for that record. In fact, the bikinis weren't that bitsy in those days, actually, were they? They were pretty yeah, big. Kind of big, yeah. <laughs> in fact, they're really bitsy these days. <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, I mean, that was a massive uh, hit. Um, uh, can you recall the reaction you got to that record and how you felt about the success of it? Which is it was fairly quick, wasn't it? Yeah, we um, they gave me the song on a Friday, as I remember, and uh, I was in Manhattan, and they said, learn this song over the weekend, and it was a demo record from uh, Paul Vance and Lee Pockers, and it was three girls did the demo. So I learned it over the weekend, and on uh, Monday, we went in and recorded, Monday afternoon, at uh, Regent Sound Studios in New York, and uh, came out. They had pressings of it, or, or rather dubs of it, I guess, uh, for th the next day, and they had it around uh, to radio stations, and uh, my brother was getting a haircut, and he heard it the next day. Amazing. So it was uh, pretty fast. Even though it's not particularly collectible, I think we ought to play a little bit of Itsy Bitsy, Teeny Weeny, Yellow Polka Dot Bikini. And here it is. There we are, Itsy Bitsy, Teeny Weeny, Yellow Polka Dot Bikini, on the record collectors tonight with special guest Brian Highland. Brian, I think you did um, another record that uh, charted also at the same time. It was 1960, also on Cap, which was Four Little Heels. Very much on similar lines, wasn't it? It was written by the same... Vance uh, and Pockers. Uh, right, Vance and Pockers. Yeah. After that, I believe, um, you then moved to... Um, what would it be in the States? Uh, ABC? Yeah, ABC, yeah. ABC Paramount. Yeah. Why the change? I mean, when you suddenly got chart records and then the move... Well, I, they, they, the uh, record company and the producers that I worked with at Cap 
uh, kept giving me uh, songs like that. Um, and then I ran into these writers, Gary Gill and Pete Udell, while I was on CAP. And um, they played some really good songs for me. And uh, so we decided to uh, leave there and uh, go to another label, which, were, well, actually, we, we did an independent production. They did uh, of a song called Let Me Belong to You, which was my second, uh, actually, hit uh, record after Itsy Bitsy in America. And, and it went to number 20, I think, or in the top 20. And um, that was in 1961. And it was that was totally different from uh, from Itsy Bitsy. It was just a ballad, a real nice ballad. And uh, then uh, we... Kept, I kept working with them, and uh, the following year, 62, in the spring, we cut Ginny Come Lately, and that was, uh, I really love that song. Uh, Ginny Come Lately. You also had a strange, one of our recent guests was Bobby V, uh, and of course his association with the crickets. You, uh, you also had an association with things like, was it Hung Up In Your Eyes and Holiday For Clowns, which was written by Sonny Curtis. Right. Right. Did you meet Sonny? Was he involved in the sessions or yes, not? Yes, he was, and uh, he's a great guy. I, uh, at that time, you're speaking about, uh, in uh, 1966, I started working with Snuff Garrett, who was Bobby's producer, and uh, I did uh, a series of records, and when I was on Phillips Records with Snuff, and uh, Leon Russell was uh, his arranger, and the song that, the first thing that we did that was a hit was The Joker Went Wild, which went to, into the top 20 in America, and uh, it wasn't a hit in England. It also happens to be, Bobby, one of um, your, in England, it, it is your most collectible record. The Joker Went Wild? Yes, and on what they call the Northern Soul um, scene, it's literally been taken over as a white version of a soul record. You would pay, in English money, for an ordinary copy, about 12 to 15 pounds, and for a demonstration copy... Uh, anywhere up to about thirty pounds. It's twenty twenty dollars to about forty five dollars. Oh, that's incredible. And that is, that's your. You don't have to have any of those records with you, do you? No, that was arranged in the trunk. Yeah, yeah, that was arranged by uh, Leon Russell, of course, wasn't right. it? Right. And you know, it's interesting that the, uh, the uh, the people Bobby was mentioning, um, Earl Palmer, uh, he was a drummer uh, on the Joker. Also, uh, was uh, Hal Blaine. We had two drummers on there. And, uh, and I found out recently Earl Palmer played uh, drums on Trip, uh, Tripatina, Professor Longhair's record, hmm. when he lived in New Orleans. Well, I think we ought to uh, play right away B Brian's rarest British release, Here's the Joker Went Wild. And that was The Joker Went Wild, which is the rarest, uh, rarest uh, recording of Brian Howland, our special guest this evening. Your musical interests, uh, do what music and so on. What do you collect? What music do you like? I like uh, I like the platters. Uh, I mean, well, the music that I collect, I I I, I guess it's kind of a combination of doo wop and rockabilly, anything in that uh, kind of thing like that. I like and harmony. You like things that I like harmony groups. Yeah. I gather your your wife Rosemary on your tour uh, does backup back backup vocals. She sings with us. Yeah. Right. And and songs, so have any of the songs that you co-written or written, have you had any hits in the States? I wrote some things with uh, Del Shannon um, back in the early 70s, and we did a couple of, uh, um, one was recorded by Waylon Jennings and uh, on one of his albums, and another song was written, uh, recorded by Barbara Lewis that I wrote with Del. And uh, also Del did some things that we wrote, co-wrote, and uh, I did also some things that I co-wrote with Del. And um, some, uh, I guess, uh, let me think. I can't think of... Uh, Quite a bit then, actually. A couple, yeah. I, are you writing again as a duo now, uh, Rosemary and yourself? Yeah, we write together. Yeah. Right. You, of course, New York is your, is, was home, but you live a long way from New York. Now you live on the West Coast. Yeah. Uh, where, whereabouts? Well, in 19, around 1967, 68, I moved to California from New York, and uh, I... I've been out there on the West Coast now since that time, and uh, now we live on, in uh, the high desert, about 100 and, 120 miles north of Los Angeles. The Mojave Desert? In the Mojave, right. The oh, Mojave Desert, yeah. Could I ask you a bit about, um, as you've mentioned, you've gone out into the desert, the American group Zit, which um, you worked with, I think that's right, isn't it? Exit. 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 Um, we have, um, we've had collectors in the past phone in asking about this band. Could you tell us a little bit about them? Well, they're from uh, around Albuquerque, and I think it was a four or five piece band. Was it five? Yeah, five piece band. And they were, uh, they were a very good band. They, uh, they were on Motown records for a while, 
and uh, they they did a tour in uh, in Europe. I think they played in Italy and uh, a couple of places over here. Did they play England? I'm not sure if they played England. I no. I certainly haven't come across them mm -hmm. playing here, but I know people do ask for them. They um, they had some they had a really interesting sound musical musically, and uh, they uh, they were kind of um, um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to find. Um, socially aware yeah. Indian band. Yeah. Going back to your influences, two, uh, I should think, say one person that I thought you might have mentioned, because I know he was on the, in the same stable as you at one time, was Curtis Mayfield, because you did a working of um, his Gypsy Woman, didn't you, later on? Did you uh, come across Curtis at yeah, all? Yeah, we ran into him. Uh, well, I, I, when, we were, when I was on ABC Paramount in America, that's when uh, I uh, first became aware of the impressions. And uh, but then when when my version of it was out in 1970, he was playing a show at the Ash Grove in Los Angeles, and uh, we went and checked him out and uh, talked to him for a couple of minutes. How many times have you been to Britain? Uh, this is the fifth time. That I've been always a regular visitor here. Yeah, I like it over here. It's really nice. But your roots are here, aren't they? In Wales, my uh, I have a grandfather that comes from uh, down there. So I mean, uh, this is the home country virtually. Yeah. I think so. What's the favorite? What's your favorite recording that, of all the records that you've done? Um, the name something which you, you particularly is fond hmm, of. That's hard to say. Um, I guess I have a real good feeling for Ginny Come Lately and uh, Gypsy Woman, Seal with a Kiss, and um, there's a couple on this uh, new Rhino album that's just come out that weren't really hits that I like. There's one song called Get the Message mm -hmm. that I like, uh, which was written by a couple of guys from the group Bread, and. Uh, I, I I guess that would be about the ones I really like. Right. So here we have uh, Get the Message, a rare recording, uh, on the Rhino label. You get that particular label from uh, from specialist record shops. On behalf of uh, Chris and myself, thank you for being our very special to get guest tonight on the Record Collectors. Thank you, Brian Mark. Thank Hyland. you, Chris. Hello, everybody, to in Wales. <laughs> 